Welcome back to Let's Play Endless Space 2 on the Reawakening Update. This is Series 11, Episode number 13. I'm JC Proton. We are picking up at turn number 33. We're playing a standard faction of the Cravers on Endless Difficulty in a Fast Speed Game. In this episode, we're going to be doing a ground attack on this pirate lair here at Aldebaran Star System. Uh, we've also got an inbound pirate fleet, so after we probably capture the system, we'll be staying here, guarding and waiting for that fleet to arrive, and then we'll finish them off whenever they arrive. I think it'll be next turn, or maybe the following turn. Also figured out that we've got, uh, this is the ship that uh, is doing the event, the dead where you have to sit still for, I think, two or three turns because I haven't moved him this turn and he's already at zero movement points. So he's stuck here uh, until that event completes. There's an inbound Riftborn Scout. Uh, has an attack power of 44 and a defense of 50, apparently. So we're going to go ahead, since we're stuck here anyway, we might as well guard. We'll receive them, and we have more attack power than the Rithborn does. So we'll, uh, we'll attack them. We will attack the Rithborn, and looks like we're probably going to win that fight. I don't know if they'll th fight and throw down with us or if they'll retreat. Either way, it should get the momentum going positive for us, so a positive war momentum. Uh, these are recently declared wars, so there's no momentum. No, no events have happened. So the way that war momentum works is uh, when you have an event, you win a fight or something, or you lose one, that event causes the momentum to change, and then it just continues going on at that same rate until some other event happens. So if we win a fight, then war momentum will be changed somewhat positively, and then it will continue to tick along at that uh, rate until something else happens. So that will be good to get that going. Other stuff we're doing, we're exploring. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, our ship designs. We're going to be doing a lot of fighting, so we're going to need to... I, I, I spotted where I made a couple mistakes. So on the lobber design, um, I went double shields on accident. I did not mean to go double shields. I meant to go on armor and a shield. So that was a whoops. So I'm going to apply that change. Uh, and I think the only place I have lobbers in queue is here at Pilgrims. So there's one there. We'll go ahead and upgrade him. There we go. That looks better. And we'll have to upgrade the other one as well. Um, we're going to... We're a... Pilgrims, we're a losing population... And something else I noticed was uh, Gatria. Um, Gatria now has a food ship on the way. It's 131 food. You only need 150 food to establish as a colony. So at this point, when that food ship arrives, Gatria will become a colony. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it over from Husk. We're at two turns till the next ship departure. They come out every other turn. So I'm going to go ahead and switch him over to Pilgrims as well. So now we'll get food ships from Pilgrims. So now Gatria, Zane, Osulo, and Akamar are all getting food from Pilgrims. You see he's feeding four. Whew. That's a heavy load. A heavy load for him to bear. He's going to lose us population in two turns. And we're going to go ahead and bring the Lobber 2 out of the hangar. Set him to guard. Yeah, this fight we had with the Unfallen, we completely wiped out their fleet, but we also lost almost all of ours. I'm going to go ahead and bring this fleet down here to Pilgrims, so it can... Oh, it can't quite make it. It's close. We're going to start repairing. Let's see, right now we're repairing at 8% per turn. We'll get a little repair going on down here. Also want to look at the guard ship design. I don't have it queued up anywhere yet. Um, I think I want to make it as inexpensive to build as possible. Right now it's 568. I think 
think I want to ma make it less expensive. So that's 438. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I'll probably just uh, do a new design of the guard. I think eventually I'm going to end up going with maybe fleet shielding and probably a, a coordinated flak module. Double shields. Double guns. And an engine. How much is it if I go with a faster engine that has a little bit more ship evasion? Two. Yeah, I want to try to keep it cheap for now. Not sure exactly how high my casualty rate is going to be on fleets. And I'll probably end up building a couple of guards pretty soon, as soon as I'm done building these gamma analysis platforms. One turn, two turns, three turns. Uh, also, by changing the colonization, uh, Husk is no longer supporting uh, the colony, so it's going to grow more population sooner. We have a couple of colonization spots. Maybe adding more population will help get this completed faster. Really not sure, but... Uh, I'm not looking forward positively to the Riftborn <laughs> getting that hero, the super fast hero. That would not be good. All right, over here we're going to go ahead and send out one last probe. Fly over to Idris. And do some scouting of these curiosities. There's a life form one and a subterranean one. Cool. Titanium and more Eden incense. Nebula discovered. Let's see, does this guy have he has no probes left and no movement left. Yeah, he'll just stay here. Okay, Admerapy. We're going to head over this way. So over here at Ceres, there is a subterranean, one, a subterranean 3 on a cold. And there's an atmospheric 4. At Pleon, there is a subterranean 1. A life form three on a cold and a subterranean one on a barren. So that subterranean one is probably going to be a, uh, I'm thinking, a strategic resource. We've got uh, curiosities over here at Alcyon and at Trappist one. So there's definitely stuff to scout out here. Um, since this guy cannot move right now. I guess I'll go ahead and throw out a couple of probes. Shoot those out here. So I'll just space those out smaller than a star system's width. Alright, he's going to stay there. Um, these guys, yeah, the fight at Aldebaran. Um, let's pull this fleet off of the hero. I think the ship needs help getting there. So, he cannot make it to Aldebaran this turn. But if he flies over to Ranas, because the hero ship has larger movement steps and has a fleet movement accelerator... I think if we team them up, we can give him a little boost on his movement and get him over to Aldebaran. Yep, makes the difference, and we get him there. Okay, cool. So we have a larger force that we can use to attack at Aldebaran. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do the invasion. Okay. 
343 will definitely do preemptive bombing. And I think that'll probably take the pirates out. The initial bombing damage might be enough, but if not, then uh, our ground attack, which is all uh, armor, should do pretty well. That was it. Preemptive bombing alone took him down. Cool. Okay. Great. All right. So we'll just stay here guarding Aldebaran until this fleet arrives. And uh, I'm sure we'll smoke them pretty easily. They have three ships, 630 attack, 523 defense, 6,700 hit points. And our fleet of five, four plus a hero, including the intruder. Yeah, 19,000 hit points, 1,500 attack, 2,100 defense. So we're, we'll completely dominate them. We are going to be doing... See, we're doing extreme atmospherics right now for research, which will give us colonizing gas giants, and it'll also unlock the ability to capture antimatter and expanded mines, so extra resource generation on strategic resource deposits. Also, that will be the third research in this tier which will unlock the next level of system upgrades. And uh, that'll be really critical for us because then we'll be able to do the Void Stone. And we'll be able to use those on, on the systems. That's gonna be really, really effective for system upgrades and will increase our industry quite a bit. Definitely looking forward to that. Also, um, by unlocking this tier, it'll give us visibility to strategic resource deposits that are Aura Calcix and uh, Quadranix. So we'll be able to start exploring those. And then after Extreme Atmospherics, uh, we've got Fleet Shielding queued up so that we can get the Battle Tactic Repair and Recover. Very important. We'll also get Improved Shields if we want to do Uniform Shielding, if we want to spend the Hyperium on it. And also we have uh, Flotilla Shields that we could do. Uh, optionally as well. Uh, I think after those, then the next thing is going to be probably Graviton research so that we can get colonizing Arctic and wave function control to get colonized ice. And those two will unlock uh, uh, the ability to see the rare curiosities, the level four. And we'll do the research to do deep epic scanning to be able to explore Curiosity Level 4. Uh, I think that'll be the, the next one. And then after that, we'll probably pick up Hyperpacks so that we'll be able to colonize toxic planets. And we're going to need to have Xenoanthropology uh, for the booster program for two more systems occupied before having... Uh, Expansion disapproval, and we can also get more influence going on too if we're still happy. We've got a situation going on where we are at eight of nine systems allowed, and we have six outposts one, two, three, I think six, five or six. So, yeah, six outposts going, so we're going to be over by five. So, that's going to be a minus 50 approval. Not, not a good thing. Uh, <laughs> So I think uh, after this uh, tr after this truce expires in four turns with the Unfallen, we're going to declare war again, and we're just going to stay at war with everybody we can at that point. Hopefully we'll be coming across more minor and major factions with our scouts that we have sending out, that we have exploring. Uh, we're going to need more wars to get more approval to counteract the fact that we are overexpanding pretty aggressively. Okay, so the pirate layer loot was 15 antimatter and 30 titanium. Ooh, pretty good. That's a pretty nice haul. Good deal. Yeah, we're going to be looking at um, eventually conquering Regulus. 
we're going to want to take Lors and Esther. And eventually, you know, yeah, we're going to we're going to come out here to Rasam, Othero. You know, we're going to take more systems. Uh, but we're, we're going to need to try to get our uh, figure out our expansion uh, resources, our uh, luxury resources to upgrade our systems. OK, Solar Nebula is discovered out here. Ooh, that's a nice spot to park a, an Overwatch ship. And a collapsing star over here, same deal. Yep. Uh, we lost the population at Pilgrims. We're down to the last one, and he's gone in two turns. I don't think we're going to get to do Chain Gang program. All right, Cravers are growing. That's good. We got, got them coming out of AC pretty fast. Uh, what we're building uh, over at AF, uh, we had a Harishim arrive on the system, so I went ahead and, and building feeding pits. Colonized lava, AI labor is really nice. So it's five additional industry uh, per population on hot and sterile planets. So for now, I think I'm going to be inclined to terraform to like desert. Um, but not better than desert uh, for now uh, so we can get uh, kind of the maximize the yield on that until we're really ready to go all the way up to fertile and the only thing we built was pilgrims uh, a lobber ship and then at Daco it is now established as a colony so this is going to be G A G and it's on a star lane. A G on a star lane 41 because there are four rocky planets and one gassy planet. And we'll get the basic uh, stuff queued up here. That's far enough. <laughs> 66 turns worth. Uh, you know what we should do at AG is let's send some population there. So like we could send one from AB. And we could send one from AE. send one from AF as well cool yeah, we got food coming from Spica, from AD over to Spica. And Spica will be in uh, a colony in three turns or so. Let's move all our fleets. Let's advance the turn and take a peek and see, see what's going to happen next. So right now we're at 625, so we're in third place. There's like a three-way tie, 454, 55, and 456 between the, um, the Sofans, the Unfallen, and the Horatio. So they're all tied basically in the middle of the pack. And then at the bottom of the pile, we have the Lumeris. And then last place is 
of Yanni. Whew, Rip Warner up to 809. Prices increase for military. Battle tactics are available. We built a gamma analysis platform. Feeding kits, pits completed at AF. Maybe move these populations around again now that uh, production matters. Yeah, 87 versus 70. Yeah, it's a little bit better over here on the Terran planet. Whew, wow, production is better over here on the non-depleted barren planet. All right, cool. Let's see, well, we don't want to be that low on approval. So let's take a look at our approval. We'll get ourselves 100% is all right. We'll do that. That'll be fine. All right, we'll move our fleets. Okay, Gaikra. Hmm. There's food there. Should I be a jerk? I think so. We can attack that food ship and then mosey along. And we have some probes that we can send out. What's their movement speed? Seven. If those two ships come over here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they're only five moves away. Hmm, a little tricky. So what I would need to do is, when I advance to the turn, keep an eye on this and hopefully intercept this food ship, attack it, and then flee before this fleet arrives and I would head on out towards Ceres. Most likely. Alright, this fleet's at Idris. Can head up to Perseus. And there is something to explore at Dill. A life form three on a cold. Looks like I'll not like I'll not be able to get there anyway. I don't really see too much of a benefit sending out a probe. I suppose I could. I think I'll just start heading heading towards JL. Okay, cool. Yeah, those long range probes are really working out well. Husk is at 18 of 19. Two turns left on the gamma analysis platform. One turn in two turns. Built one, two to go. 
Hope I make it. Hope I win that. Let's take a look over here at this Riftborn. Did he make it there? He did not make it. Oh, that's right. The Riftborn are kind of slow, aren't they? They're kind of slow at moving through the galaxy. Okay, um, my ship. Oh, we're at seven movement. I think I'm going to wait for him to show up, though. I think I am. I'm going to go ahead and send probes out. I want to get that war momentum going. All right, so he's going to stay there. Oh, yeah, there it is. It came to an end. Nice. 20 approval. That's going to help us out for 10 turns. Very nice. Very nice. That totally helps us out. Yeah. It came came at a good time. We're going to have a bunch of uh, dis disapproval from over-colonization. So that's going to work out really well. We're going to have some of these systems completing soon. Oh, look at Pilgrims. Look at us. Lobber will be done in one turn. We could do that. We're going to lose a Craver in one turn. You know what else we could do. Yep. We could build a feeding pit. And then we'll be all out of Pilgrims, but it'll be plus 25 food for five turns. So maybe we'll hang on to it for a few more turns. Yeah, see, it's uh, one, two turns away from being completed. Uh, maybe we'll build more attackers or something. An attacker versus a lobber. So a little quest started, the death without a corpse. Okay. Use warp drive to travel two times without a star lane. So we need to go to two systems that have uh, these anomalies. Or I guess we go just to have to fly there. Oh, man, that's far. Whew. Okay, we need a fast ship to do that. And the other one's over here at Alcyon. Okay, that one's a little bit easier to do. There's a life form one on that lava there. So this will probably get with this scout here that's at Gaikra, I'm thinking. The one over here, I may make a special ship for that. Death without a corpse, Rigel. I don't know. Does it, it? I don't think it needs to explore anything while it's there. I think it's fine to use that ship like that. I think it'll be okay. That way, it'll have some residual value as, as a scout. Maybe build that at Husk. Right after.
for the gamma analysis platform, I suppose. There used to be a bug uh, with that quest where it made the system uncolonizable, um, but with the reawakening update, um, that has been fixed. You know, our approval is so high at a, at a 132, I think I'm going to go ahead and pass another law. Let's do Super Tax Act. We can do it right now. That'll give us extra three dust per population. We have 62 pops, so it'll be 186. Yeah, we can pull it off. Let's do it, man. It won't be a lot, but it'll it'll be nice. Get a little extra. We can run it for now until uh, till our overcolonization starts getting too high. And we can always pull back on that, and we can pull back on the um, cram exam law that we're running as well. So we, we've definitely got some room, some wiggle room in our approvals. So that's, that's really good. All right, we'll advance the turn one last time, and then we'll probably wrap up this recording after we take a peek. Take a peek at the events for next turn. We should have a battle with the Riftborn Scout. We should have a battle with the Pirate Fleet at the Aldebaran star system. Yeah, we should have a fight here at Aldebaran. And over here at IMEX. There we are. What's the matter, pirates? Are you scared to attack? They're chicken. And here. Okay, let's do this attack here. Against that civilian. Oh, they're guarding. Oh, I could have slipped by, but now they're trapped. Now, if I go there, I'll be trapped. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here's our chance. All right, we'll just slide on over this way. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy with me for blowing up that food ship. Three, let's see, this guy has one titanium and one hyperion probe, so he gets three probes per turn. So let's go ahead and send one probe out. All right, now we'll go ahead and head on over this way. <laughs> All right, that worked out okay. And where's this fight? Yeah. Oh, we got a new hero. Horatio. Oh, Ooh, this technologist, he's pretty fast. And we have a seeker. So the counselor could maybe be a governor. This guy's pretty quick. He has extra movement speed. And he's a seeker. So extra movement, extra movement. Ooh. I'm likely going to take this guy. Uh, because I need a fast seeker hero to put together on a fleet and come over and take down the Cephaloros. That's a big priority. The Bountiful Filtration trait is amazing. Um, very important for me to get that. And they're already best friends with the Unfallen. Although, if I remember right, the Unfallen cannot assimilate a minor faction uh, until they entwine the system with their vines. So I kind of want to make a point of keeping the Unfallen from getting vines over here just so that I can get the 
cephalorus, cephalorus, and so that they don't assimilate the Harashims because I want to keep a war with them for all of the rest of the game. That's a, an extra fee, free 15 approval for me. All right, let's do this fight over here at IMEX and we'll do the fight against the pirates and then we'll wrap up this recording. This one's going a little bit long. And we're definitely gonna go turtle. He's gonna stay and fight. Scout versus scout. That was faster than I expected. That worked out great. So we got the food ship for 166 dust. That was nice. Blew up his scout. And now we have positive war momentum. Good deal. And we have positive war momentum now with the Sophons because we blockaded a system at least for a little bit so that's good and how long until we can go to war again two turns left on the truce with the unfallen now let's do the pirate battle what was going on over here with these sofons a detector and, ex and two accelerators okay they're still sticking with energy mostly that's good We'll start building some ships that have some missiles. Um, yeah, we're going to go turtle. So that is a gun and a laser. This one is a laser and a beam. And this one is all missiles. So I want to go short range with everything in one lane and turtle. And we have, we have them about three to one. We should do pretty well at shooting down his missiles, and then we'll get into close range. So it looks like he's got hard target. So we'll start at medium range and then close to short range. Curious to see how much focus. For me. Ooh, he will leveled up. check the numbers. We'll check the numbers after this. Tax 
tactical scan mode. All right, we'll see. We'll see how we have. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're focus firing mostly on this ship. A little bit over here. A little bit over here. Yeah, the hero and this coordinator are not going to focus fire. But the attackers will focus fire. Hmm. His health is going down faster than his shields. Yeah. Yeah, we took him out. He still had shields up. This one, too. Interesting. Good deal. All right, let's look at math. Without missed shots. Yeah, guns did a lot. Yeah, we got a lot of damage through his shields. Cool. And let's look at that. The scout fight. Wow, he did very little damage. Their laser weapons only did 28 damage? I'm surprised it was so low. Oh, we started at short range. He went Team Spirit. Huh. I'm still surprised that it was such a small amount of damage he inflicted. It's not like our scout has any shields. There's no defenses on the scout. Wow, that worked out great. Hmm. Your actions will only make the war more painful. <laughs> yep, yeah, we're the bad guys. Or monsters. Okay, we discovered the home planet of the Riftborn. Vanguard is here. Okay, target acquired. I've gained control of the Iris Solar Nebula for AA Husk. All right, great. That's more dust income. Cool. How's our approval looking? Still doing okay. Getting a little bit rough here. We may have to fiddle around with that. I'll do that off camera. I have access to Red Sang. Solo quest started. The Living Plague. All right. Either produced. Either produce influence and science or. Not influence. Either produce industry and science or produce industry and food. All right. Either way, you get a random technology. Bumper crop has come to an end. The pilgrims, we lost a craver. And we did the uh, feeding pit. So we're going to have extra food for five turns. I guess we're not going to be. Um, <laughs> I guess we're not going to uh, get rid of the system for five turns. And we'll go ahead and build a couple of these ships. And we're going to grow and we're going to grow a new Craver population over here. So that'll help move things along. Cravers are growing. Well, we don't seem to have lost yet on the quest. Or the event here. Next turn, we get our third gamma analysis platform completed. We have two out of the three. Get Admiral TZ. Overwatch completed. Trade Clearing Bureau. Is here. Oh, yeah. Whew. Pretty expensive in a in a scarce resource game. These these resource amounts are are a real a real challenge sometimes. 
OK, and a system upgrades. All right, so what we would want to do is go with the resources we have. So we would go with deciduous trees and void stone. So that's how we're going to do it. We can afford to do one upgrade. probably want to do it somewhere where we have a lot of population. I'm not going to do it at Husk because he's still doing gamma analysis. AC would be a good choice. He has a lot of population and he's going to have even more population. He's going to grow to be really big and strong and he's only about five turns away from starting to being able to start producing military ships. So I think that's probably the first place that I'm going to do a level 3 modernization. And I think the next one is going to be Husk at AA Husk. But he has other things he needs to finish first. He needs to finish this platform. And let's see, how long will it take for us to be able to build the next one? Let's see, we produce 18 per turn, and we need 75. That's 4.2 turns. And we need 40. Void stones. We're producing three per turn, so oh, yeah, we really need to get our void stone production up. That's one every 13 turns. However, we do have four on hand. That's still going to be 12 turns away. That's a pretty, that's a pretty long time. But that's, yeah, I mean, Husk needs to build these uh, epi epigenetic crop seeding and the intensive cultivation logistics as well. So. And then needs to colonize that colony, that hus that uh, that lava planet. Yeah, it'd probably be a good move to do the level three modernization here first, and then as soon as I have the resources available, well, then we'll do the next one probably at Husk. I, th I think it's probably going to be a good way to go. And we'll probably pick up here uh, on the next episode. We'll either be at the end of turn 35 if I spot some of this and that or whatever uh, that needs to be looked at. Um, or if I've got everything wrapped up pretty well, then uh, we'll just pick up at turn 36. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, everybody, for watching.